DNA profiling. What is DNA profiling? Uh, DNA profiling, when you are going for DNA testing, you are going for DNA test. We are just going to do what you call DNA profiling. So we make the uh, profiles of DNA. So how is it uh, identified? We use the, um, it is shown on the screen as bars. So if the bars are corresponding, then it means that those organisms or those individuals are related to one another. So DNA uh, profiling is a technique used to identify someone's unknown DNA profile using a known DNA profile. For example, um, you are looking for your father and then you don't know your father. There are two guys who have come and these two guys, they are claiming that you, you are the son or you are the daughter of those uh, guys. But only one guy will be uh, the father of that daughter or, or that, that kid. So now, I know the DNA profile of you, of I go, I test the DNA profile. So your DNA profile becomes the reference point. So that is the known DNA profile. So this non-DNA profile, I compare it with these two people whom I don't know their DNA profile. I go and then I test their DNA. If I find that one of them corresponds with my DNA profile, then it means that that is my father. If the two of them, no one corresponds to my DNA profile, then it means that nobody there is the father so that's how that's this technique is supposed is is used is a technique we used to identify someone's unknown dna profile using a known dna profile so you are the known dna profile the father uh, the other two guys are the unknown dna profile so if they correspond then we say that you are the father uh, of that kid so here is an example Yes, for example, this is a scene, crime scene, someone committed a crime. Therefore, when I go to the crime, I find some material, for example, hair, blood, I collect that sample. When I collect that sample, I take for DNA testing or for DNA profiling. So I get the profile of the DNA. That's why in most cases, when there is a crime scene, we don't allow people to go there. Why? Because you might bypass there and then when they come to collect the sample, your hair is included there. And then you're gonna be the, one of the suspects because your DNA, once they test there, they see that you are among the people who are there. That's why if there is a crime scene, don't tend to go there if you are not an investigative person. All right, so you're saying that the, um, the crime scene, this is the sample they picked from the crime scene. So here we have the suspect. We have three people whom uh, we are claiming that these are the people who commit the what? The crime. So what they do is to get their DNA uh, profiles and then I start to to correspond with what we found on the crime scene. So if I use a ruler and then I draw here, doesn't there is nothing here. I draw this corresponds, that's one. This one corresponds, that's two. There is nothing here, there's nothing. Then this one is three. This one, there's nothing corresponding. And then this one is four. So this one is gone. Then what about this? This one is corresponding. 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 This one is also corresponding. So all of, all of them are corresponding. What about this? Shows that there is some which are corresponding and some are not corresponding. Therefore, we will conclude that the suspect, suspect number two, is the person who did the crime. Uh, why? Because what we collected from the crime scene and his or her DNA profile are exactly the same. Therefore, suspect two is will be taken for accountability of this. So what are some of the uses of DNA profiling? What are some of the uses of this technique? What are some? Yes. Okay, number one, the, it is personal identification. You know about uh, the person is missing, someone is missing. Uh, so it's, it's very easy to identify the person, the uh, identity, someone has burned somewhere. So it's easy to identify the identity of that person. Then number two, Paternity and maternity. It's maybe your mother. You don't know your mother, and there are two ladies who are claiming that you are the mother. They are the mother, so or father. 
we can use this uh, technique to identify the actual parents of this. This, how is this one possible for mother? Maybe in the in the in the hospital and they have swapped the kids. You know, when the kids are just born, they in most cases they don't tend to resemble their parents. But as they grow on, they keep they tend to resemble their parents. So by that time, still we can do what we can find the parents there. Then, uh, then another one is uh, diagnosis uh, 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 of inherited diseases. Diagnosis of the inherited diseases. There are some diseases which can be uh, diagnosed using DNA replication to know actually that this is the disease you have using DNA, uh, sorry, using DNA profiling. So diagnosis of inherited disease, and sometimes we can even find a cure for, for those uh, diseases. Then another one is criminal identification. Criminal identification, for example, this uh, on the crime scene, they go take the samples which are there, and then they compare to the person they are suspecting, and then we find the person who they did the what? The crime. Then, then forensics, maybe someone is burned still, maybe in an accident, you can't find anything. So we can still use DNA, even if it is 20 years, as long as I get any remain of you, still we can find uh, the DNA from there, and then we can correspond it to. Then they are saying that uh, identifying suitable organ donor. It's, no, it's not easy to find the organ uh, donor. So you have to first find, to see that if the DNA profile of you and the person you are giving the organ is compatible or is almost the same, or otherwise the organ will be rejected by that uh, person's body. So uh, what we do is to first identify to see the correlation between you and the person who is going to receive the what? The organ. And then once these, uh, they are compatible, then they transfer the organ from one person to another. Then what are some of the disadvantages of this uh, technique? Number one, uh, it is expensive. Not everybody can achieve or can afford to do this. Not everybody. So it is very expensive. Uh, so it requires people who are, yes, well off. Then number two, human errors. Uh, some people imagine someone is, is, is drunk, Some uh, maybe a bear is drunk and then go back and then is, is trying to analyze definitely is going to have some errors. Even if it is not that, still, uh, when you're analyzing, you can have some, you are not 100% correct. There are some errors which are developed there. Yes, that's why we increase the sample size and then also we repeat the experiment so that you to increase the reliability, so that you increase the sample size. So it means that you have to be with a lot and then you have to repeat the, the what, the this technique so that you show that what you got is exactly even what another person is going to get. Then we shall say that that's maybe the human errors have been minimized. Not all hospitals have necessary re uh, requirement to carry out this DNA profiling, just like schools. But look at the schools, you'll find out that some schools, they have better equipments, they have almost everything students need to learn. But other schools, they, they are struggling. Whether they are government schools or where they are private schools, you'll find them that they have different categories or different degrees. What about now hospitals? Still, some hospitals are well off. They can um, have these techniques to be supported. Others, they don't. Others, they have equipments, but they don't have the chemicals they use for this to, to happen. So you see that some hospitals, they don't have necessary requirements to carry out this DNA profiling. So then it is uh, possible to plant DNA at a, a crime scene giving false evidence. Yes, it is possible if someone wants to frame you, then automatically can be uh, planted. And then it means that this is not a, a good idea of, of, of DNA profiling. So uh, innocent people or per persons, DNA might be at this crime scene, uh, at the scene of crime scene, even though they had nothing to do with the crime. That's why I say that you are just passing and then you your hair drops and then when they're collecting the sample, 
then they also take your hair. Then you are innocent, but because the DNA profile is showing that it's you who was there by the time the crime was committed, then automatically you're going to be among the people who are suspects. So and that's why you're saying that yeah, DNA profile has some uh, disadvantages. So let's look at um, RNA ribonucleic acid so once we talk about rna then it means that we are going to start what you call uh protein synthesis so rna and dna are almost the same but they differ in some few uh few aspects why am i saying they're same because both of them they are nucleic acids there's three types of rna based on the function they do so there are three types of DNA based on the location. But RNA, there are three, but these ones, they are based on the function uh, they are doing. So number one, we have messenger RNA, as you hear the word. It is a messenger responsible for carrying genetic information uh, that is transcribed from DNA. So it carries it from DNA and then takes it um, to cytoplasm or to the ribosome so that protein synthesis can be made. Then number two, you have ribosomal RNA. That is, it means that it is it is forming the ribosome. It forms the skeletons of the ribosome. So this one forms the ribosome and produces the proteins based on the information received from the transfer RNA. So the transfer RNA, when it's coming, it comes to the ribosome. So the ribosomal RNA is just it's just the skeleton of a uh, ribosome then you have the transfer a uh, this one changes or it has what called anticodons it called for the specific amino acid so it transfer the amino acid from the cytoplasm and then brings it to the ribosome so that a protein a protein is what is is formed we will see this uh, when you go into detail of protein synthesis. So what is the role played by uh, RNA in protein synthesis? Number one, messenger RNA molecules carry the coding sequences for protein synthesis. Number two, ribosomal RNA forms the core of the cell's ribosome. And then number three, transfer RNA carry amino acids to the ribosome. That's what I've been trying to explain, that their function determine the type of RNA it is. What they do will determine what uh, that type of RNA is. So there are three, messenger, ribosomal, and then transfer RNA. So what is the structure uh, of, of, of RNA? Structure of RNA is almost like DNA, but just a small difference of uh, uracil instead of thymine, and then a single strand instead of double strand. It's, for it is straight, it's not, uh, it's not helical. So saying that a single stranded molecule consists of nucleotides. We saw that it's also containing nucleotide, phosphate, sugar, and then nitrogenous base. But the phosphate is fine. Sugar is ribose instead of deoxyribose. And nitrogenous bases, it has uracil instead of thymine. Nucleotide is made up of sugar. That is the sugar, which type of sugar is uh, ribose. And then phosphate and nitrogenous, uh, nitrogenous bases it has a phosphate nitrogenous bases. And then four nitrogenous bases uh, of RNA are adenine, yes, adenine, uracil, cytosine, and uh, guanine. So these are the four nitrogenous bases regarding two RNA. So this is the basic structure of, 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 of RNA. So uh, this is the messenger RNA. This is how messenger RNA looks like. And then this is the transfer RNA, how it looks like. Then the ribosome RNA, uh, it just forms the ribosome. And basically for this level, you don't need to know its uh, structure. Yes. Let's look at a protein synthesis in detail. Let's look at protein synthesis uh, in detail.